So my number one movie that shaped my views on LA is uh, 2004's Collateral. And this is directed by Michael Mann, starring Tom Cruise, Jamie Foxx, uh, and Mark Ruffalo. Uh, Logline. And Jada. Uh, that's right. Jada as well. Yep. <laughs> uh, Logline, <laughs> a cab driver finds himself the hostage of an engaging contract killer as he makes his rounds from hit to hit during one night in Los Angeles. This this film and why I had to put it for number one for me is I think this film more than any other that I've seen really captures the the mood, the look and and the vibe of L.A., um, especially how L.A. look uh, looks at night um, is very unique to, to this city like there. It is so sprawling. Um, there are so many then lights that are, that are, uh, you know, on at night that it sort of gives this weird glow to the, to the sky, um, this purple glow, like it never really gets dark here, but at the same time, unlike a city, like a New York that quote unquote never sleeps like LA is dead at night. There is no one out. It is yeah. deserted, but it is very bright. It's, it's just this odd feeling. I think what Michael Mann does so beautifully, at least, uh, in the visuals here is that because he's shooting, uh, this is the first film. I want to say the first one he experimented with um, digital. There might've been another one previous to this, but definitely the, a lot of this is his experimenting around with digital photography, which when this movie came out in 2004 was definitely on the cutting edge. They hadn't really figured it out yet. Um, so today, most films are shot digitally, but they don't necessarily have a digital film look to it. Um, mm -hmm. And this was a film where the scenes that he does shoot digitally definitely look very digital. Like mm -hmm. there's... Um, uh, you see a very uh, great the depth of field. You can really see in the background of so many shots, like the down, downtown LA skyline, which is, again, is something that is always sticking up uh, for most places in LA that you can see that back there. And because you've shot a digital, that can then come across. Um, so I think for that, for sure, like visually, like I've never seen a movie that makes you feel like you're in LA for that reason. Um, you know, also this is a movie that like a log line describes about a cab driver who's taking around Tom Cruise as his killer. So, so much of the movie takes place in a car and driving around. And mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, LA, you do spend most of your time in, in the yep. car and the city as Tom Cruise describes it in the film is a disconnected sprawl, which is definitely true. And because they're going to all these different parts of LA, that are all so different and so unique. I think that is something too. This film captures uh, um, the that multicultural side of LA as well. Like you go to mm -hmm. a, a African American jazz club, you're going to a, you know a, a, a nightclub in Koreatown, then you're going to like this bar where a bunch of the Latinos are hanging out. Mm -hmm. So you're really seeing like LA. There's so many of these little pockets of multiculturalism and all these different cultures and subcultures that that come to LA and that are part of this city. It's it's definitely a um, a web of all these different uh, subcultures, which again, this film does a really good job with as well. Um, you know, there's also the classic uh, LA talking about how to get places and arguing over, oh, you take this road to this road to this road, you know, like they uh, mock in the Californians, that famous yeah. SNL skit. You know, this is back in 2004 opening scene, him and Jada are debating over what the fastest way is to get yeah. from, uh, you know, they're, I think they were picking her up at LAX uh, yeah. to get to downtown. And that's something like, you do talk about that. You show up at a party and the first thing is, oh, how'd you get here? Oh, I took this to this to this. Oh, interesting. I took this to this. It's just <laughs> part of living here. So I think on the lighter side of that, that movie uh, does that too. But, um, you know, then in terms of themes of this film, I think it also captures, you know, the different types of personalities in LA. So like Jamie Foxx is a cab driver, um, but he has this dream of having a limo company. Mm -hmm. He's got his little, uh, you know, in the, the visor in his cab, like an island. He's like, this is my dream. I sit here and I think about this, right? So he's a dreamer. A lot of people do come to LA and they dream of things. Um, but he's had this dream for 12 years and he hasn't done anything about it. And there's a lot of people here too that are these dreamers, but they never take action on it, whether they're afraid to fail or whether they, it's just like, they always have to have some excuse of why they're not actually writing that screenplay or going out to that audition. It's like excuse upon excuse. And then you have Tom Cruise, who is this like contract killer that is driving around with Jamie Foxx. And he is very type A, very driven. He's like, look, I'm doing this. Boom, boom, boom. He takes action. Um, and there's definitely that type of you know, uh, personality here too in LA, those hard driving, like have that list, get things done. And, uh, you know, that, that's actually in the film, you know, Tom Cruise in a way like inspires Jamie Foxx to take action. Like at the end, mm -hmm. he's saving the girl, he's killing the, the, the villain. So he's actually able to um, do something with his life for the first time, uh, inspired by Tom Cruise. And definitely like I've met both of these types of people in LA too, that are just, you know, might have talent or this, this dream, but they never act on it. 
Um, and then the people that are all that they're doing is acting. So, you know, again, for all these different reasons, um, you know, I feel that this film is a perfect encapsulation of all the different sides and aspects of LA. And, you know, every time I watch it, um, you feel like you're out in LA at 2 a.m. on the streets. And I just don't think any other movies really ever captured that since, um, you know, and the film just overall is fantastic. I mean, Michael Mann, I, this might even been the first Michael Mann movie we've talked about so far on the yeah. podcast. One of my favorite directors, um, you know, masterpiece after masterpiece. And, and this one, I just think is so tight. I um, mean, rewatching it for this movie, it's like nothing is wasted. It's so just a tight little thriller, fantastic acting across the board by Fox. And especially Tom Cruise is just dynamite in this thing. And uh, just, a, just a great film. Um, but one that I think really does make me feel, even if I'm not in LA, I watch this, I feel like I'm there. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not surprised this is your number one because I know you know, visual expression is sort of number one for you yep. always when it comes yeah. to movies. So I couldn't agree more. Like visually, this movie captures LA and especially LA in, at night in such a beautiful way. And the, this prob it's not by accident because I think there's something dark, seductive about nights and we're talking about noir, right? There's mm -hmm. a reason why LA is all noir and i think this is in many ways sort of a modern day noir noir i, yeah. I don't think it's classified as a new noir but it could be oh yeah totally yeah no i can um, see that yeah so i think it's it, it, that's all beautiful the whole driving around you know different communities traffic all of that is sort of perfect um it's a great thriller like you said super economical you, you know edge to edge you're on your seat and you're totally happy watching it the th on the thematic side Again, I don't think the script or the movie makers are actually going for anything, which is totally fine. Like not everything oh, really? has okay. to be, you know, super deep and, and such. There's a little bit of what you highlighted, which I think resonates with me as well. But but yeah, I I like this movie a lot, but I have to kind of just put a pin on deeper questions and also just the overarching plot and story and such like why are you still here with the sky and even, Jamie, you mean like, why is Jamie? Yeah. Still? Why, why are you still here? And what, you know, even the whole thing of him trying to save Jada and the fact that, Oh, Jada was the one at the beginning who he was trying to pick up from that's the airport, convenient, And then she's obviously. the one yeah. that's convenient. There's yeah, a lot of sure. sort of things, yeah. which, you know, they don't bother me, but I just try to kind of put a pin on it. If it were not for those things, like this movie would be, kind of in the A plus A tier for me. I think when it comes to Michael Mann, I think Heat probably is to me in that tier. It's better, yeah, it's a better I film. I watched it in like a million years. It's, but that film holds up too. Another LA classic, yeah. Another LA classic, exactly, which I almost considered putting on this list. Um, but yeah, that said, great watch. Everyone's great, especially Tom Cruise, like you said. And I was mm -hmm. thinking about this, that, you know, we talk about Tom Cruise now in a very different light. This is probably him at the height of his powers. Or oh yeah, saying he's had many many innings. Definitely one of the innings where he was at the height of his powers to accept a role like this, where you're just outright bad. Uh, oh yeah, doing terrible actions, but then bring some humanity to that role. I don't think there's much written there, to be honest. Like there mm -hmm. isn't much depth to these characters, mm -hmm. you know. And that to me is what the lacking part is. But you see a lot in his physicality and how he, you know, communicates with him. The scene in the hospital with Tom Cruise and um, and Jamie Foxx's mother. That you know, there are moments like that which you know really tells you a lot about who he is. And but I think it's it's him doing most of that work. But I just applaud him for even taking a role like this because he really saw it. And of of course his you know his desire. Uh, to work with the best of the best, which he's right. done for his career. So, yeah. 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 No, the, I mean, I think, yeah, Tom and what he's able to bring to this role makes Vincent, the character, like kind of sympathetic. Like you're yeah. rooting for him, even though he's going around killing, yeah. you know, people <laughs> on screen like this in vicious ways. Like you do get kind of sad at the end uh, when he gets killed um, because you do, you, you know, there's a glimpse at his backstory, maybe with his dad, but you're not even sure whether that's true or not. But it, it, to your point, I think it all comes through in Tom's performance. Um, like he's able to give you enough where you care about him as, as a, as a character. Yeah. And he's not just like a Terminator sort of going around. Totally. Otherwise this movie fails. Like you Agree. not be sitting with these people in a car. If you totally. Care. I would, 
you know me, I will leave the door. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to your point, or to our points, even in the last couple of movies we talked about, it, it's that friendship in a way. It's like a friendship develops yeah. between these two folks. Um, and, you you know, he helps Jamie Foxx with his mom and gives him these inspiration. Like, he's trying to help him. For some reason, he doesn't have to. Uh, I mean, maybe he's doing it because he wants to make sure Jamie Foxx doesn't run away and, you know, endear himself to him a little bit so that he can continue to drive. I mean, there's, there might be other reasons that, but I think that's why the character is kind of complex, but there's still that friendship element too, which is a, a theme that's been through a number of our films that develops between these two guys, um, even though it ends tragically for yeah. one of them, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just a, just a great film. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.